Now I understand," said Pearson softly. So that's what he's after—a kind of telepathic peeping Tom, no longer content with mere watching. I suppose you're humouring me," said Connolly without resentment. But I don't mind, and you've summed it up pretty accurately as you usually do. It was quite a while before I realised what his game was. Once the first shock had worn off, I tried to analyse the position logically. I thought backward from that first moment of recognition, and in the end, I knew that it wasn't a sudden invasion of my mind. It had been with me for years, so well hidden that I never guessed it. I expect you'll laugh at this, knowing me as you do, but、uh, I've never been altogether at ease with a woman, and now I know the reason. Omega has always been there, sharing my emotions, gloating over the passions he can no longer experience in his body. The only way I kept my control was by fighting back, trying to come to grips with him and understand what he was, and in the end, I succeeded. He's a long way away, and there must be some limit to his powers. What I've told you already, Jack, must be hard enough for you to believe, but it's nothing to what I've got to say now. Yet remember, you agreed that I'm not an imaginative man, and see if you can find a flaw anywhere in this story. I don't know if you've read any of the evidence suggesting that telepathy is somehow independent of time. I know that it is. Omega doesn't belong to our age. He's somewhere in the future, immensely far ahead of us. For a while, I thought he must be one of the last men. And that's why I gave him his name. But now I'm not sure. Perhaps he belongs to an age when there are a myriad different races of man scattered all over the universe. His people, wherever and whenever they may be, have reached the heights and fallen from them into the depths the beasts can never know. There's a sense of evil about him, Jack. The real evil that most of us never meet in all our lives. Yet sometimes, I feel almost sorry for him, because I know what has made him the thing he is. Have you ever wondered, Jack, what the human race will do when science has discovered everything, when there are no more worlds to be explored, when all the stars have given up their secrets? Omega is one of the answers. I hope he's not the only one, or if so, everything we've striven for is in vain. They have pampered their bodies until they are useless, and too late they have discovered their mistake. Perhaps they have thought, as some men have, that they could live by intellect alone, and perhaps they are immortal. And that must be their real damnation. Through the ages, their minds have been corroding in their feeble bodies, seeking some release from their intolerable boredom. They have found it, at last, in the only way they can, by sending back their minds to an earlier, more virile age, and becoming parasites on the emotions of others. I wonder how many of them there are. Perhaps they explain all cases of what used to be called possession. How they must have ransacked the past to assuage their hunger! Can't you picture them, flocking like carrion crows around the decaying Roman Empire, jostling one another for the minds of Nero and Caligula and Tiberius? Perhaps Omega failed to get those richer prizes, or perhaps he hasn't much choice and must take whatever mind he can contact in any age, transferring from that to the next whenever he has the chance. It was only slowly, of course, that I worked all this out. I think it adds to his enjoyment to know that I'm aware of his presence. I think he's deliberately helping, breaking down his side of the barrier. For in the end, I was able to see him. Connolly broke off, looking around. Pearson saw that they were no longer alone on the hilltop. A young couple, hand in hand, were coming up the road toward the crucifix. They were oblivious to the night around them and to any spectators, and went past without the least sign of recognition. 
There was a bitter smile on Connolly's lips as he watched them go. I suppose I should be ashamed of this. But I was wishing then that he'd leave me and go after that boy. But he won't. No, I've refused to play his game any more. He's staying to see what happens. You were going to tell me what he's like, said Pearson, annoyed at the interruption. Connolly lit a cigarette and inhaled deeply before replying. Can you imagine a room without walls? He's in a, a kind of hollow, egg-shaped space. There's no entrance or exit and no gravity, unless he's learned to defy it, because he floats in the center, and around him is a, a circle of short, fluted cylinders turning slowly in the air. I think there must be machines of some kind obeying his will. And once there was a large oval hanging beside him with perfectly formed arms coming from it. It could only have been a robot, yet those hands and fingers seemed alive. They were feeding and massaging him, treating him like a baby. It, oh, it was horrible. He's like a nightmare travesty of mankind, with huge malevolent eyes. And this is strange. It's not the way one had imagined evolution going. He's covered with a fine layer of fur, as blue as the room in which he lives. Every time I've seen him, he's been in the same position, half curled up like a sleeping baby. I think his legs have completely atrophied. Perhaps his arms as well. Only his brain is still active, hunting up and down the ages for its prey. And now you know why there was nothing you or anyone else could do. Your psychiatrists might cure me if I was insane, but the science that can deal with Omega hasn't been invented yet. Connolly paused, then smiled wryly. Just because I'm sane, I realize that you can't be expected to believe me. So, there's no common ground on which we can meet. Pearson rose from the boulder on which he had been sitting, and shivered slightly. The night was becoming cold, but that was nothing to the feeling of inner helplessness that had overwhelmed him as Connolly spoke. I'll be frank, Roy, he began slowly. Of course I don't believe you. But insofar as you believe in Omega yourself, he's real to you, and I'll accept him on that basis and fight him with you. It may be a dangerous game. How do we know what he can do when he's cornered? I'll take that chance, Pearson replied, beginning to walk down the hill. Connolly followed him without argument. Meanwhile, just what do you propose to do yourself? Relax. Avoid emotion. Above all, keep away from women, Ruth, Maud, and the rest of them. That's been the hardest job. It isn't easy to break the habits of a lifetime. I can well believe that, replied Pearson, a little dryly. And there, thought Pearson, in a sudden flash of insight, was the answer. He would never have believed it, but Connolly's past had finally caught up with him. Omega was nothing more than a symbol of conscience, a personification of guilt. When Connolly realized this, he would cease to be haunted. As for the remarkably detailed nature of the hallucination, that was yet another example of the tricks the human mind can play in its efforts to deceive itself. There must be some reason why the obsession had taken this form, but that was of minor importance. Pearson explained this to Connolly at some length as they approached the village. The other listened so patiently that Pearson had an uncomfortable feeling that he was the one who was being humoured. But he continued grimly to the end. When he had finished, Connolly gave a short, mirthless laugh. Your story is as logical as mine, but neither of us can convince the other. If you're right, then in time I may return to normal. You can't imagine how real Omega is to me. He's more real than you are. If I close my eyes, you're gone, but he's still there. I wish I knew what he was waiting for. I've left my old life behind. He knows I won't go back to it while he's there. 
So what's he got to gain by hanging on? He turned to Pearson with a feverish eagerness. That's what really frightens me, Jack. He must know what my future is. All my life must be like a book he can dip into where he pleases. So there must still be some experience ahead of me that he's waiting to savor. Sometimes, sometimes I wonder if it's my death.